Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go through section 7.2, Modeling with Linear Equations. So we're still on the topic of linear equations. We just go into a little bit greater detail in this section um, and just want to reiterate the point. If I have two pieces of information, I can write the equation of a line. I can obtain a linear equation. I need either a point and the slope or two points. And then the key formulas from the previous section, that we're going to use again in this section my slope equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We got our y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, and whoops, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's our point slope formula. Those are going to be, the, those are three of the key formulas that we'll use in this section. First question says, find a linear equation with a slope of 3. So when I see slope of 3, I'm going to write m equals 3. And it passes through the point 4, 5. 4, 5. Notice how we're given a point and a slope. Well, when I have that information, I'm going to use the point-slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm going to substitute the slope right there. The point, if I need to remind myself, that's x, that's y, that's w the 5 goes, let me change color here, the 5 goes over there while the 4 goes over there. The point gets substituted in for x1 and y1. So now let's rewrite our equation with everything plugged in y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 4. That's point slope form. We're going to clean this up and write it in slope intercept form. On the left hand side I'm keeping everything the same. On the right hand side distribute the 3 to both terms. 3x minus 12 and then our last step in this problem is to add that 5 to both sides. y equals 3x minus uh, tw negative 12 add 5 is 7. So 3x minus 7. That is our linear equation and the answer to our first example. Our second example, we have to find an equation of a line passing through points 4, 2 and 8, 5. Now we have two points, so I cannot yet use the point slope formula because I don't know what the slope is. Fortunately, I can find the slope using the formula y min y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to rewrite the two points just so they're a little bit closer to my work here. 4, 2, 8, 5. And then I'm going to label my points x1, y1, x2, y2. And it just makes it a little bit easier to know what goes where. So substituting into my slope formula, 5 minus 2, y2 minus y1, over 8 minus 4, x2 minus x1. 5 minus 2 is 3, 8 minus 4 is 4, and we have a slope of 3 fourths. Okay, that's step 1. Now, that, oops, I made a mistake there. Maybe you saw it before I did. If you did, good job. That shouldn't be y equals. The letter, the variable that we use for slope is m. That should have said m equals. And then I'm just going to write it again over on the right to remind myself that I now have the slope. And maybe even I write the word slope. Now I'm not going to forget what that is. Okay, so we use a slope formula. We found the slope. Now we have a slope and a point. Technically we have two points, but we're just going to pick whichever one we like better. Pick your favorite point. So the sl point slope formula is the other step into the involved in this problem y minus y1, m, x minus x1, and substitute everything from up above. y minus 2, that's my y1 value, 3 fourths times x minus x1 is 4. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing as a previous example. Distribute the 3 fourths to both of those terms. When you distribute the 3 fourths to the x, all that happens is they go next to each other, 3 fourths times 
x. Don't really need to change much there. And when you distribute the 3 fourths to the 4, I'm going to write this off to the side here because it's a fraction. 3 fourths times 4. Um, if you are uncomfortable with fractions, you can certainly use your calculator here. But 3 fourths times 4, the 4's cancel out, and it's just 3. If you have 3 fourths times 4, the answer is 3. Okay, so I'm going to put a minus 3 right there. Last step, just like the previous example, is to add 2 to both sides of my equation, and then write down what our line looks like. y equals 3 fourths x, negative 3 add 2 is minus 1. Okay, and that is the answer to example 2. The next step in this process is called fitting lines to data, to real data. Real data, typically not perfectly linear, but it can still be modeled using a linear equation. One way we do this is to take the first and the last data points, find the slope, and then get the equation like we did before, just using two quote-unquote good points to model the data. There's lots of different ways to do it. That's kind of an introductory approach. So here's our, our example where we're going to do this. The graph uh, shows payments made to performers and copyright holders for digital performance and streaming services uh, between 2009 and 2013, so a few years ago, uh, and as this was reported to the Recording Industry Association of America. The points you can check, they are not all in, uh, on a straight, perfectly straight line, but we're going to model them with linear data in part A and use that to make a prediction about what's going to happen next year, well, 2014, uh, in part B. Okay, So they tell us in the problem to specifically use that point and that point to model this data. Okay, And so what I want to start out with is writing down for point A what are its coordinates, and point A is the year 2009, all right? So, but, but we're going to say that that is year zero, okay? So we're going to say that, year, that 2009 is year zero, and that has a y-coordinate of 156. If we were to actually use 2009 there, it would just make this a little bit um, uh, clunkier of an equation. So a lot of the time what you'll see in the homework in my math lab is they'll say, let X or T be the number of years since 2009 or whatever year they're starting at in their example. Okay, that's how that works. So when I write down my B point, right, 2013, 2009, count on your fingers or your toes if you need to, 2013 is four years after 2009. Okay, and that has a y-coordinate of 590. All right, so here we go. Now that we got that out, out of the way, we've got the points written down. Our next step is to find the slope, y2 minus y1. That's 590 minus 156 divided by x2 minus x1, 4 minus 0. 590 minus 156 is 400. 34 divided by 4 minus 0 is 4. And now that doesn't divide nicely, but I'm not going to leave it as a fraction in this example. I want to write this as 108.5. So I have a slope of 108.5. And what that slope means in this example is that every year, the every year, the number of, uh, what was the Y coordinate, the number of uh, millions of dollars made by copyright holders goes up by 108, 108 million dollars increase year to year. I wonder if that same slope would be modeled if we were to look at current data from current, from more recent years, or if it's gotten more or less. It would be interesting. Um, but we do have another step as I'm rambling on here. Uh, so we have one more step to this problem, y minus y1, m times x minus x1. Um, if you have a point that has a coordinate of 0, I highly recommend using that in your point slope formula because what ends up happening is y minus 156 equals my slope, 108.5, 
times x minus 0. The math just comes out real nice. There's no, there's no distributing really to do there. Um, I'm going to write y equals 108.5x and that 156 we would add to get it on the right hand side. Okay, so that's our answer right there to part A. And then we move on to part B. Use this model to predict payments for digital performance and streaming in 2014, the next year. Now, here's where students make a mistake. If I want to use that equation to predict the next year, I'm going to write the wrong thing first. 108.5 times 2014 plus 156. That is the mistake that people make, okay? Don't make that mistake, please. I'm going to erase that 2014. What number should it be? How many years after 2009 is that? It should be times 5. That's 5 years after 2009. So to find the answer to our prediction, we, we uh, take 108.5 times 5, which is 542.5.5, and then add to that the 156. Y equals 600, oops, 698. Point five, and that's million dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, 698.5 is our answer to part B. And then on this last slide of the section, uh, we get the, we're shown what the, the straight line through those points look like. And we see this little star here. That's the prediction. Our model predicted 698.5. The actual value from 2014 is $773 million. Um, so close, not a perfect prediction, but that's because we're using a straight line to predict you know, these not very straight points. But they're kind of close to each other. Okay, that is the end of section 7.2. Hopefully now you have enough skills to attack the homework. If you have any questions as you're working through the homework in my math lab, please let me know. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.